Have you been dealing with sharp or catching hip pain every time you try to squat or play sports? If so, you might be dealing with hip impingement syndrome, also called FAI, which stands for femoroacetabular impingement. I know that's a mouthful, and you're probably wondering what it is and how it happens. In this video, I'm gonna describe exactly that for you because I've dealt with hip impingement, and I've been a sports physical therapist for the last 15 years, and it was hard for me to treat. So what I wanted to do is create a resource and a video for all of you so you can overcome your hip pain. And I'm gonna show you the exact program I used to get out of my hip impingement pain. So if that sounds like you and you've been dealing with hip pain, this video is for you, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kevin Vandy, specialist physical therapist with Competitive Edge Physical Therapy. So earlier I mentioned that I have had hip impingement syndrome. I had it on my right hip and this was months ago and I had it for months, honestly. It hurt when I sat, it hurt when I started to squat, especially uh, heavy squats and deep squats, and it even started hurting me at night. And you might be experiencing the same symptoms. Hip impingement can be tricky to diagnose and can be even harder to treat. So I'm gonna try to provide some resources for you today with this video that tells you exactly what hip impingement is, and more importantly, I'm gonna show you some drills you can do to solve it. So what is hip impingement? So this is a uh, model of a pelvis and thigh bone. And what happens with hip impingement is the joint here between these two structures basically gets pinched. The bones come close together either when you raise your leg, that can cause a pinch, raise your leg to the side, or especially when your leg rotates inward. Those motions will cause the two bones to come close to each other and cause inflammation and pain. Now in hip impingement, sometimes these bones can have structural changes. You'll see that via x-ray or MRI, where you'll see there'll be extra growth portions on these bones. When that happens, it narrows the joint space and causes a higher likelihood that you're going to pinch the hip and have hip impingement syndrome. Even when you do have it, even when you've, if you've got an x-ray, you've got an image and it showed hip impingement, you may have been suggested to get uh, injection or maybe been suggested for surgery. Well, what I'm here to tell you is don't go there yet. There may be a way that you can solve this without either of, without an injection and without surgery. And these exercises I'm gonna show you are gonna address some of the reasons why those bones come too close together via strengthening, stretching, and opening up your hip joint called your hip capsule. What we know is by doing those things, giving your joint more room to move, improving the strength of your glute, your butt muscle, your hip flexor, and your core, that can help open up the joint space and also doing drills where you improve the way you move, the control of your body, particularly with squatting. And I'm gonna show, show you a, a level one drill that really helped me when I wanted to get back to deep, heavy squatting. I had to start, I had to redo, I had to start easy and work my way up, but it worked really well and I'm gonna show you that today. So, guys, if you've experienced hip impingement and uh, you've been struggling to solve it, just drop a comment below and let me know some things that have worked for you. That way this can be a resource for other people that have hip impingement so they can read the comments and see what's worked and especially if you find value in the exercises I'm gonna show you, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, and hit the notification bell so you're alerted when I shoot more videos. But I'd love to read your comments and ask questions. I'll be there to answer them. All right, so let's dive in to the best exercises I used, the program I used to overcome my own hip pain for hip impingement. The first two exercises I wanna show you made the biggest difference for me in terms of reducing my initial hip pain. Again, I was experiencing pain at night, pain when I got up out of a chair, and it was, it was uncomfortable, so I needed to get out of pain fast. And these two capsular mobility drills, or the connective tissue around the hip drills, these made a huge difference. So let me show you exactly how these are performed. You're gonna use a super band, this big thick band here. You need a thick band because the hip joint is really strong, and you need a way to break through the resistance in the tissue. So you're gonna put this way up into your groin, really high up to get into your hip joint. This band is gonna distract or pull on the hip to create some space and take away some of the pinch you feel 
when you're in a bent or flexed position. From there, you're gonna move out so there's enough tension in the band. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna lean forward into a lunge type position, and then you're gonna allow your leg to move into a inner rotated position. And you're gonna move and hold for five seconds and bring it back out. Move and hold for five seconds and bring it back out. And each time you're gonna go a little bit further and a little bit further. The key here is to stay out of any pinching pain. If you get the pinch, try to move yourself out more and get more pull on the band. That can help. You can also rotate your body open just a little bit and then go through the inner rotation. That can also take away the pinch. So this is a internal rotation stretch with the super band. You wanna do that for two to three minutes. You can do it uh, at least once a day. I used to do it before bed because that's when I would get my pain when I lied on my right side. So any time of day is fine but definitely two to three minutes a day. The next drill also uses the super band. I call this drill the hip opener. Instead of going into internal rotation or, or inner rotation of the leg, we're gonna get the leg to roll out. And that's gonna give you a very deep, strong stretch of your inner thigh muscle. So band is still high up in the groin. You're now gonna make it so the band is pulling backwards on your hip. You're gonna come down onto your um, one knee, two hands, and the affected leg is up. Foot is going to stay flat, and you might feel some pinch at this position, that's okay. But then what you're gonna do, without letting your big toe come off the ground, you're going to open up your leg. So you're gonna rotate it outwards, and then lean into that stretch and you're gonna feel it really in the inside part of your thigh, maybe deep into your hip. For this drill, you wanna hold for about two to three minutes, a long time, to let the inner structures of your hip relax and open up. This was a savior for me. It really made my hip feel better, and I've given this to hundreds of clients, and it's done the same for them. So, two to three minutes at a time, use the super band, and get some good mobility in your hip joint. The purpose of this next exercise is to activate your butt muscle, your glute muscle, through all ranges of motion. What often happens in hip impingement is, is the glute muscle is strong in these inner motions, even back in the initial part of extension uh, or, or getting your leg behind you. But then when you get out to the far reaches of your range of motion, your butt muscle often doesn't work the way it should. So you have to use your brain to turn on that muscle via activation exercises. So I call this drill the around the world drill because you're gonna go through a full range around the hip with the emphasis of spreading the band. So you're gonna use a band around your knee, spreading the band, keeping your glute turned on, as you bring your hip all the way through its full range of motion, and then back up to the side, all the way around, and back down. Now, if you extend your hip and then you start to rotate, you'll often feel a pinch right in here. That's your hip impingement. Just bring the knee down a tad. Focus on turning on your glute by spreading the band more, then try to lift back into the range and rotate through. Now, you wanna do this about 10 to 15 repetitions on each side, slow, controlled, focusing on making sure your butt muscle stays active the entire time. For this next drill, we're gonna work on how you control your, your pelvis so the structure here, both in a front rotated and back rotated position. What often happens with FAI or hip impingement in a squat is as you squat down, you'll get a high arch in your back or you'll over arch your back. 
that will rotate your pelvis forward and that causes a pinch that you'll feel in the front of your hip or your groin. So one of the drills we're gonna work on is to get your glutes active while performing a squat in a neutral spine position. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna have your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. You're gonna have a band around your knees and you're gonna start coming into a hip hinge, which is just bring your butt back behind you, chest forward. You're gonna take your feet and you're gonna to try to separate them. You're gonna to try to drive the floor apart. That's gonna turn on your glute muscles. Again, your feet aren't gonna move, you're just gonna dig into the ground. The next piece is the key part. What you then wanna do is you wanna create pressure in your abdomen. You can either imagine pulling your belly button back to your spine or trying to remove your sway back or remove the arch in your back. Just a little, just a little bit. If you go too much, you're gonna round your back and we don't want that. We just want your back to be flat. So uh, a little tuck of your buttocks underneath you. Now, you wanna hold that position as you slowly squat down. So spread the floor, hold the neutral back position. The second you feel your back start to arch, or the second you feel your butt tuck underneath you and your back, uh, when your back rounds, you wanna come up a little bit. Reset, spread the floor, abdominal muscles tight, and come back down in a neutral spine. And you wanna repeat that probably 20 reps. There's not a lot of load, but this is the foundation you're gonna to use to then get back into your back squat or your front squat. You're gonna to learn to control the coordination between your torso and your butt and pelvis. Do this right and you'll remove pressure, pinching and impingement from your hips. It's okay if you go slow, it's okay if it takes you time, once you nail this down, you'll be able to go back to sport training, you'll be able to go back to lifting training without the same amount of load on your hips because it's now gonna be on your butt muscles and your core. The final exercise that I used to get a control of my hip impingement and reduce my pain is a single leg deadlift. Now a deadlift uses your hamstring, the back of your thigh, your butt muscle, and your core. This is key because when your hamstring can help control the tilt of your pelvis and can provide support to the back of the hip, it can reduce the pinch in the front of the hip. So the way you're gonna do this, you're gonna stand on one foot, you can hold your hand on a chair or a table for support. You're gonna keep your abdominal muscles tight, a slight bend in the knee. And then from there, you're gonna hinge around your hip. You can hold a couple dumbbells if you wanna add weight but you're gonna hinge over your hip, keeping your spine straight until the point where you feel your hamstring engage. You're gonna hold for a second, and then you're gonna squeeze your butt, tighten your hamstring, and drive your hip upwards. As you come down, remember, keep your core nice and tight so you don't arch your back, which will cause your hip impingement. So keep a neutral core. Come down till you feel your hamstring engage and then come back up. Again, you can, use, uh, you can use a table for support and you can also add weight when ready. So those are the drills that I personally use to overcome my hip impingement syndrome. I've given these exercises to hundreds of clients throughout my career as a physical therapist and they've worked very, very well. Now they don't work in all cases. Sometimes there are more severe cases that require going to a physio, working with a specialist, and require time. Give yourself a number of weeks, six to eight weeks, to really see, see this improve. The two drills with the Superband can get you out of pain really quick, within the first week or two. But then your body has to adapt. You have to get stronger, you have to maintain your mobility, and most important for hip impingement, you have to learn to control your torso and your hips at the same time. Often hip impingement takes time to come on and it also takes work and time to get it to go away. But these drills, if you dedicate yourself to them over the next four to six weeks, maybe as much as eight weeks, 
they help me, I know they're gonna make a difference and help you get out of pain and help you move better and hopefully get back to the things you love like squatting and playing sports. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get value from it. I would love if you liked the video, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell to get future videos of mine. Thanks for being here. Again, I hope that the experience I have with my hip helps all of you to overcome your hip pain. Be sure to check out the next video for more glute activation drills that can also help and be progressions of the drills today. Till next time, train smarter and perform better.